This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Has the Falcon 9 reuse program been more successful than SpaceX expected? The first stage boosters and payload fairings are certainly amassing impressive reuse records and wowing people with Olympic style synchronized landings. But how does this measure up to what SpaceX first thought reuse would be like? I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, and today we'll dive into what reuse goals SpaceX has met, which ones they haven't, and some goals they will never accomplish with Falcon 9. SpaceX has redefined rocketry with the Falcon 9. They have proven that reuse can be fast, reliable, cost-effective, and even possible. So with SpaceX already achieving the 12th flight of a single Falcon 9 booster, let's take a look at what goals SpaceX originally set for themselves when it comes to reuse. For the first stage booster, the goal was to fly at least 10 times without major refurbishments. After 10 flights, SpaceX would then conduct extensive inspections before the booster would fly another 10 missions with minimal refurbishment work between each mission. Elon Musk further stated that each booster could potentially be used up to 100 times. The turnaround goal at this point was to fly a Falcon 9 booster, land it, stack it, and launch it again within 24 hours. This goal was restated by Elon several times in numerous interviews. Uh, we intend to demonstrate uh, two orbital launches of the same five vehicle within 24 hours, uh, no later than next year. Further up the rocket, reusing the payload fairings was also a goal to save costs and processing time. Fairings are not only quite expensive, but also take a long time to manufacture. SpaceX also announced very early in Falcon 9 development that they were planning to reuse the second stage. Plans for stage two recovery persisted into 2017, when Elon Musk said SpaceX was debating trying to recover the second stage of the Falcon Heavy demo mission. But as usually happens, some goals are met and exceeded while others prove infeasible. All plans for second stage recovery were eventually shelved as SpaceX did not find the necessary resources, time, and money to develop a reusable second stage. Recovering the second stage would be more difficult than the first stage, as the second stage would have to survive re-entry from orbital velocities. A heat shield would have been needed, and SpaceX decided to transition the second stage reuse ambitions into their Starship program. Likewise, while Falcon 9 boosters have been reused in as little as 27 days, the need for a 24-hour turnaround never materialized and has been moved away from Falcon to Starship. The minimal booster inspections between flights have never been accomplished in less than 27 days, flight to flight. Even the recovery steps, such as folding the landing legs and placing the rocket onto the transporter, takes hours, if not days. Also, SpaceX currently does not have a high enough flight rate to need to fly a booster again within 24 hours. This is also true of the goal to reuse a single booster up to 100 times. The flight rate will likely not support this need, even though the boosters are built for it. Also, while it looks like SpaceX will achieve an approximately weekly flight rate in 2022, with their growing fleet of boosters, they can give each booster a multi-week break between flights without the need for a 24-hour turnaround attempt. But there are several places where SpaceX has not only succeeded in its goal, but far exceeded it. And more on that in a moment. First, over to Jack. Thanks, Ian. Also, thanks to Squarespace for both sponsoring this video and making it easy for even a lunkhead like me to make a professional looking website. With Squarespace, you don't have to be a web designer to make a website that looks like you spent a bunch of money and hired one. I set up my website as a place to showcase my photography and sell prints. Squarespace makes it easy to set up an online store or collect donations toward your cause. They have excellent analytics to help you figure out what's working and what isn't. And Squarespace has the super helpful ability to connect your various social media accounts. So when you tweet something witty or post a cool shot on your Instagram, it shows up how and where you want it to without you having to go in and cross post it yourself. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash NASA spaceflight to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Back to you, Ian, my good buddy. Fairing recovery, while different from how it was originally done, is a major area of success for Falcon 9 reuse. The initial plans called for two ships to chase the fairings as they parachuted down to the ocean. The ships would each catch one half of the fairing. And while some fairing halves were caught, 
Most of them ended up splashing down in the ocean because the ships just couldn't maneuver fast enough to get underneath them to catch. In some cases, the ship even ran over the fairings after splashdown because they couldn't stop in time. So SpaceX made changes to the fairings to simplify the process. This followed their unofficial motto of The best part is no part. The simplified process? Just let them splash down. But saltwater is usually avoided at all costs as it can damage electronics. To solve this, SpaceX moved the fairing vent holes that are used to equalize the pressure as the rocket ascends to space. This move allowed the fairing halves to splash down while the inner parts stay dry and the electronics and expensive parts of the fairings are protected. So you could say for the fairing that SpaceX overachieved their goals, as they removed the very complicated steps of catching and protecting the fairing from salt water, and managed to replace that with simply fishing them out of the water. But the Falcon 9 booster is where SpaceX has far exceeded their own goals barring a few issues that caused boosters to ditch into the ocean to protect their landing sites. In order to rapidly and effectively reuse the Falcon 9, SpaceX introduced the Block 5 vehicle upgrade. These featured upgraded Merlin 1D engines and engine shielding to provide higher thrust and withstand the heat of re-entry. New titanium grid fins for better heat resistance compared to the original aluminum fins, seen here glowing and sparking during entry, were also added. The landing legs were also given the ability to retract, to help with faster processing after landings. All of these upgrades combined to create an increased longevity and quicker turnaround time for the boosters. An amazing thing SpaceX has managed is a remarkable success rate when it comes to booster recovery. In 2021 alone, they successfully landed 97% of the boosters launched. And so far in 2022, they have not lost a single first stage. And if we look at the status quo for booster recovery operations, the process has largely gone unchanged from what SpaceX planned at the beginning. Although I think we can all agree that Octograbber, a neat little robot used to hold onto boosters that land on drone ships, is a pretty good addition to the overall recovery process. And once the boosters are recovered, the refurbishment is another place where Falcon 9 reuse shines. Like we said, the original goal was to perform minimum refurbishment until Flight 10. This is a place where things didn't start out as well as SpaceX had hoped, but have certainly improved with time. At first, we saw clear evidence of inspections after just a few flights. But Elon also admitted that the initial Block 5 design was a pain to turn around. In fact, boosters 1049 and 1051 have average turnaround times between flights of more than 100 days. So, SpaceX made changes to the Block 5 booster design to help speed up turnaround times. Starting with booster 1058, turnaround times dropped to a record low of just 27 days between flights, a feat actually achieved by both boosters 1058 and 1060. Right now, boosters 1059 and 1060 have average flight times between launches of less than 65 days across 11 flights each. But even more impressive is that the current data, especially with the later Block 5 boosters, indicates there is no major refurbishment needed after 10 flights. In all, it seems that SpaceX has really nailed Falcon 9 first stage and fairing reuse. Several boosters have exceeded 10 flights, and one has performed 12 as of writing. In some aspects, SpaceX even exceeded its own expectations. However, not everything went to plan. Second stage reuse was entirely cancelled due to it being more difficult than first stage recovery, as well as Starship coming online in the future. Falcon 9 has provided SpaceX with a priceless trove of data on rocket reuse. Lessons learned from the Falcon 9 program are what made Starship possible. Although Falcon 9 will likely never be a truly rapidly reusable launch vehicle, it no doubt paved the way for an era of cheap, reliable, and reusable rockets. Hey, before I let you all go, it's Jack one more time to remind you that one of the ways you can support the channel is by buying some merch off our store. Yes, we've got some cool t-shirts, and including this broomstick landing shirt that Pauline just made. It's amazing, I love it, it's hilarious, and it's sort of Falcon 9 recovery related, so if that piques your interest, check it out. Thanks again for watching our videos and supporting our channel.